Uh oh, we've got. Uh, I got to switch the camera around. It's it's facing the the wrong way. Uh -huh. All right. <laughs> All right. It still didn't turn around. All right. There we go. There we go. Everybody will really love that. All right. This is behind the scenes stuff anyway. You know the the. The challenges of having a podcast and radio show. That's right. Oh, You're doing it. I love it. I love it. All right. Welcome, this is Matt Barbie with Time for Success, Business Owner Dad's Edition, and I'm a speaker, author, and business growth strategist, and uh, you know, my mission is really to, to equip entrepreneurs uh, to be able to have uh, the business that uh, gives their family and, and their employees their dreams. So we've got a couple special, really, a really special guests today. We've got Dr. Lance McCarthy and, oh, that's my right. name's Mark Bush. Mark Bush? Correct. Uh, thank you so much for coming no, today. No worries. Thanks for having me. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so Dr. Lance is with Ferguson 1000, and Mr. Bush, you are as well, right? Excellent, yes. yes and Global 1000, yes. right? And um, so can you tell the audience a little bit more about that organization? Yes, sir. Thanks for having us on today, Matt. Uh, over four and a half years ago, the world saw an enormous amount of injustice uh, in the Ferguson unrest. And we wanted to come with a solution separate from just social, but economic. We believed that the issue was economic. So we created Ferguson 1000 to create a thousand jobs in the Ferguson and St. Louis area, to be able to help people mm -hmm. uh, get trained correctly and be able to push a tech agenda because we believe that liberal wages was a mechanism to, to do that. Fast forward, now four and a half years later, we're in 10 cities around the country. We have duplicated the effort. Uh, we have an innovative model called hiring events. We actually get hired on the spot, free suits, free haircuts, expungement services, and prayer chapel. Uh, wow. It's been very fortunate to move this model and we believe it's going to change urban America around the country. That's incredible. And uh, so you're in you're in ten yes. cities now. Yes, sir. But then the Global One Thousand. What what is what is that? Tell me more about that. Yeah, Global One Thousand is the the parent company. The okay. Brand okay. Because uh, as we began to move, we had to have the, the markets dictate to their their city's name. So now right. it's Global One Thousand in Los Angeles. And Global ah, 1000 okay. In okay. Et cetera, et cetera. Wow! Wow, that's a that's an amazing calling that uh, oh, you're living out. It it, it is very um, very fulfilling because yeah. we believe that we have one of the few hiring events that have prayer chapel. People literally line up to get prayed on before they go into the uh, hiring event, and then actually, of course, they come out they're excited. We change lives right there, and we yeah. do a lot with faith based organizations around the country. Uh, people literally sign up for the hiring events at the church. So you get to come back on Sunday and testify about how they got a job and, and, and was able to do that perspective. We say it doesn't take 40 years for a 11-day journey. Wow. Wow. No, no, not at all. You guys really try to shorten that path. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We believe it can be changed in, in 40 hours. Yeah. Well, I love the, the economic impact that yes. is, is core to your mission. Yes, sir. Because, um, you know, what, what really got me excited about business and and. and really down my path was the idea of kind of that economic empowerment. It kind of first came to me through like kind of microfinancing and those discussions, yes. but it was still along those lines of, you know, when you, when you help people with uh, having a living, you know, to be able to support their families and all that, it really does <clears throat> change the dynamic. Oh, yes. Uh, you know, we're talking continuously about crime, about bad yeah. education. All these mechanisms have a direct correlation to economics. And so we believe having a holistic strategy that has an economic base, but also a faith base and a social base, you get the double impact, the double bottom line, where you have an yeah. ROI uh, financially, but also ROI socially impact. Right. And, and, and these people who are jumping in, finding a job, I mean, they're finding more more purpose in their lives. Yes, yes, yes. You know, they, they don't no, no longer feel like their only way out is maybe crime or, That's you know, another other... Uh, less good ways of For sure. taking care of their families. People just need to be informed. And you mentioned crime. We have a uh, prison reentry model mm. where we teach uh, ex felons to be entrepreneurs, particularly in the tech space. So, under wow. prison tech, we have been very fortunate for quite a bit of guys around the country as well. Yeah, wow. 
So you've got this amazing organization that's yes, growing, impacting people's lives. Yes, sir. But you've also got a family, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell me more about your family. Two kids and a wife. Uh, my son is in college now, 21 years old, um, junior at Florida A&M, studying pharmacy and sports medicine. And my daughter is 15 years old, a sophomore in high school. And so they are my, my bread and butter and the reason to get up and live every day. And uh, a wife of eight years to, to, to move the agenda forward. So you have to be able to balance both family and business. And by being an entrepreneur, I believe it allows me even better time because I control my time. You can control your time. Yeah, I think that's key. Yes. That is key. So what about you now? Mr. Bush, you also have a, a family? I do. I have two wonderful adult children. Just had my first grandson. Mm -hmm. He was 13 months old. My daughter's 31. My son's 29. I am a divorcee. Um, uh, however, mom still, I guess today, what you would call a complex still family. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, everyone still participates and shares and equally in whatever happens in our lives. Awesome. So, uh, yes, yeah, awesome. fam family is central to, to our whole platform as well, too. Right, right. Well, I mean, you have employment, and you can take care of your families, right? Absolutely. Important. Yeah. In my book, the first um, sentence in the book, Under Wall Street to the Hood, is that if you don't understand capitalism, you're a foreigner in your own country. Learn the language. And once you understand the language, you can be more successful. And this hmm. people need to understand that business is a language, not emotional, not personal. It is business, which is a language and a science. Wow, wow. So tell me more about that. So business is a language. Yes. How does, what does that mean? Um, I think that a lot of people, um, especially those who aren't entrepreneurs, don't understand that the essence of business is a science. I mean, you have mm -hmm. a strategy, you execute, you have quantifiable goals, qualifiable goals, and so you're able to track that continuously. Uh, and I believe that once you really understand that model, you can talk the language. If you're going to an investor, if you're going to a business partner, whatever there is, the language is better understood as opposed to operating from emotions. Mm. Uh, and mm -hmm. I just think that many people we see it in our, our realm that people operate from emotions as opposed to operating from a science and a language. Uh -huh. Okay. So it's kind of like uh, when somebody says, well, you know, whether the profits are struggling, I mean, I need to figure out how to uh, cut costs and, you know, they might need to, you know, talk with the team. How do we do that? You know, the team might be, well, you know, we can't, you know, shift uh, the amount of hours worked or something like that because, I mean, but rather than thinking creatively, how do we actually make this happen? They start kind of going to that fear mode of just, Definitely. well, we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't do this, which, which, <sighs> You know, hinders the creative thinking in terms of how can we make this happen, right? Good is that point. is that what I'm trying to say? Oh, yes. Okay. No, you're saying it correctly. And, and Mark is our chief um, possibility officer because yeah. he deals more with the individual infrastructure. And so he has those emotional conversations yeah. uh, where I believe that if you focus on the science, no, I'm not saying don't be nice and emotional, but right, I think right. that if we put the strategy and the science and the language first, people will be more successful to have the other happiness as opposed to right. being in fear mode, being in emotional mode. Oh, I'm not feeling good. I mean, we're talking to one of our uh, directors yesterday, and no disrespect, but she's a very successful person, but just because of fear, she didn't move forward, and, and Mark really helped her understand. Yeah, yeah one, of, one of the challenges, and um, just to maybe go back to your initial introduction, um, uh, Doc talked about recidivism, you know, with guys coming in and out of jail and, yeah. and or just community issues because, again, the uh, trying to cure the social problems are directly related to economics. Mm -hmm. If I have these other choices, now I may not have the tools. So Doc and I, one of the beauties of Global 1000 is that, um, you know, like he has his lane, he knows what I do. Again, we've been working together for 20 years, so just as yeah. entrepreneurs. So we do, so we get folks come in and they may not necessarily have the confidence, the belief, or the tools, you know, for that initial job, but we're at least giving them that platform. Yeah. And you do have someone like me who's maybe a little more edgy, a little more vortex, like, look, if you want this, this is what it's going to take. Yeah. And I, I, it's one of my pleasures. Yeah, I've been mentoring entrepreneurs for 15 years. Wow. Almost. I mean, I know I may not look like it, but no, I, no, I, no. I have, I have, I 
not really have. Since and you were so, five? Yeah, I, yeah, I started really early. He's older than me. So, yeah, I actually yeah. So, I mean, I have, you know, fortunately, successfully, Global 1000, you know, we have kids who, again, who have revenue-based businesses that are doing great, who graduated from Harvard. And my, I mean, these are people wow. who we've actually taken under our wings and, you know, just push, push, push. And on the other side, you get that kid or you get that young man or woman who really has all the tools but doesn't really have the confidence like he identified yesterday. Lots of experience, yeah. but uh, we're taking them to a new platform to think a little differently. Remember, you and I, except for you are an entrepreneur, uh, our foundation really said to us, go to school, graduate from college, get a job. Right. And right. kind of that's it. You, 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 You've done your thing. <laughs> you've done your thing. You've, 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 you know, you've won. You've, you've done it. But we kind of push the envelope a little more. Yeah. We do both. You know, we, we make sure you're set. But you may want to segue out of that that job one day. Right. You shouldn't be afraid to do your best there. And if you want more freedom and time with your family, mm-hmm. as you know, it does allow for that. Right. Right. So and kind of going back to family, you know, you, you, you've hit a lot of points about um, the, the importance of the language of business, the language of capitalism, the, ca- the language of economics. You know, that's not necessarily something that's really taught well in schools. How are you both trying to make sure that your family, you know, your, your kids understand those languages? How are you reinforcing that, teaching them to that? Well, well a couple of things. We talk about this quite a bit um, through direct sharing. Uh-huh. Because they know what dad does and how he does it. But then literally they see the results. Yeah. So being a part of it, talking to them and seeing that this flexibility, but only your own, allows you more latitude than you would the normal way. And so um, actually during the holiday season, we used to have the little town shows. Yeah. And now we have the entrepreneur show. So the kids have to go into a little research and present to us business plans at the, <laughs> at the family uh, outing. And it's just fantastic. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they get to see it. You know, it's so funny. We both have <laughs> stories. Like you, you ask, you, you ask the great question, maybe the wrong question. <laughs> I, I tend to pontificate, but uh, we both have like some really cool stories. I'll use my son for example. His son the same way. It's almost, um, I don't know, it's a weird thing. We use the anecdote in sports, and we say he's pedigree. Like yeah. they naturally become. Yeah. I've never forced entrepreneurship on my son or daughter. But today, their mindset is just gone. I didn't do it. I, I mean, they say, well, Dad, you know, we've been watching you. We see you. Right. They're like, well, geez, how did he, you know, I mean, he's at all the games. He's, you know, right, once right. you get it, you understand the value. Yeah. You understand, like you said, buying, you pay for time by yeah. creating this open lifestyle, if you will. Right, right. We never encourage not, you do need to go and get that job and cut your teeth at some oh, company or get beat up a little bit or, you know, then you're, you're ready for entrepreneurship. I mean, uh-huh. some folks are fortunate enough if they have the silver spoon or whatever, you know, you just right, start right. out. And you, but you, you know the trajectory. You know how this goes. Right. Um, so I, I, my son just, like, as his, they just kind of fell into it. He's, yeah. he's He is an entrepreneur today and he's, since he was 16 years old, he started off not all his teeth. I never forget walking into your living room and you have 200 pairs of sneakers in there. <laughs> uh, my son was a sneakerhead back in the day and he's transitioning into him being a, you know, a, an entrepreneur. So he's been doing it for 13 oh, years wow. now. He's 29 years old. Wow. I, I never, honestly, never pushed that on him. Really? I never did. No, I just... And I believe it brings the family closer because yeah. the king has the flexibility. So yeah. the game or the breakfast or going to teach it to school yeah. allows it to happen. And so, again, the children see that. And as Mark said, they begin to emulate it. And so we're very blessed uh, that our kids have, have come out that way. So modeling yes. modeling's been Definitely. important. And, and, yeah. and think about it for anything in your family. Yeah. I mean, yeah. kids start mocking and you know, you know, six, seven, eight. Right, and, and, and even though they act, well, well, even though they don't want to acquiesce to those terms when they're teenagers, they're really doing it. Yeah, they're rebelling, or it seems it it, it appears like rebellion or challenge, or they're questioning. They're yeah. just questioning because they really want to. They see dad, they see mom, they really want to do that. Yeah, but they're like they don't kind of want you to know that I'm kind of giving I'm kind of giving in now. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. Kind of, that's what I think. You know, that's what, that's what happens. <laughs> Here. Uh, yeah. So, 
So yeah, so that's interesting because a lot of people see uh, rebelliousness or, I mean, you know, they, we call it rebelliousness, but I mean, it's just kind of a natural process that teenagers go through in terms of trying to understand their world. Mm -hmm. And it's on top of a whole bunch of hormones that they that's don't even correct. know how to that's, control. That's a very, very good way to put it. That's a very good way to put it. Yes, yeah, yeah. I, I, I read an article that was, uh, you know, kind of from supposed to be from the mind's eye of a teenager. Um mm -hmm. And uh, it was talking about like how emotions just pop up, oh, you know, and it's like, I don't even know where that came from, but for some reason, all of a sudden I hated you in that moment. Like, I don't even know why, even though I still love you, you know, like, so that, that is a difficult I, I balance. I have to say this based on those five words. So I have uh, situations where, again, well, you know, these discipline measures you have or whatever expectations you have in the yeah. home or for school. And all I'd say very simply and it, it's a risk, it's a gamble. Yeah. But I'd say, hate me today, love me later. That's good. That's good. Well, I said that on a regular basis. <laughs> right, right. To to <laughs> but sure enough, those days came. Yeah. And they looked at me like, oh man, dad, thank you so much. Or I, I'm, I'm fortunate and blessed to have that happen. Yeah. Because yeah. they really hated me at that moment. So yeah. I mean, from slamming the door to, I mean, I have a normal family. It's like, right, I mean, right, but right. later, maybe a couple of years down the road, it pays off. So, yeah. so you, I, I love what you talked about modeling. You didn't force anything upon anybody, but so in terms of success, right, we, we all have different definitions of what sure, that looks I'm like. Sure. How does what <coughs> success look like for you and your families and your family members? A good question. I think, again, it's both quantitative uh, objectives as well as qualitative. So on the quantitative, you have goals financially that you want to hit. Yeah. You can always measure those, and so that's great. And then qualitatively, you know, how is your quality of life and your family? And, and mentioning children, my son about two months ago just said, Dad, I will never disappoint you. And he was just like, oh, my word. Uh, he said, because you did so much for the family, you moved forward. And so that was just very fulfilling. Uh, yeah. and, and so, again, we have both. Having the objective of the financial side in order to, to grow, but also that's what's that quality of life. Not only quality of life for your family, but how you influence others. And what's so great about Global 1000, we change families' lives all across the country. Absolutely. There's nothing better than someone come up to you and say, I heard you speak or I met with uh, a company today and my life has changed. I'm going to go back and just change my whole realm. And so that's, that's the, the, the feedback and the, the balance and reward that we get in reference to success. That's fantastic. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, that really is a high for us. It's yes. really a, so, you know, you, you hear folks, the feedback. Is, tell them a quick story about when he said, uh, Dad, he wouldn't look at the old apartment in the big house. Oh, my God. I didn't know if we had time for that. Uh, uh, I think so. I think we got a few more minutes. Okay, so Go ahead. so about two years ago, I editorialized it. I'm, I was on a, a consulting job in Baton Rouge. I live and reside in L.A. My son's there. My son's, what, now 27 at this age, 26, 27. Okay. And he was near Santa Monica in L.A. Uh, and w where we started. But uh, I, I, I went to school. My kids were born in Boston. We moved to L.A. Okay. So um, so he was primarily raised in L.A. since he was eight. So, But when we went out there, humble beginnings, you know, start over. I'm... Like, took the risk, left corporate America, we going for it now. Right, um, right. All in. So he watched us go from the humble, and I'm using the economic piece because it's tangible. And right, right. And he remembers in our little place, really small, two-bedroom with crowd, blah, blah, blah. And so he just, one day, he drove by, he was in the neighborhood, and he took a picture, and he sent it to me on text. I was like, what is this? I picked up a phone call. He's like, Dad, I went by the place every day, and I just shook my head. And he says... You know, no matter what, if you never gave me a dime, if you never got, did this or that, you know, you're my hero forever because I don't know how you, how did you do that? You well, know, so he saw his life trajectory, like, go a hundred times through entrepreneurship. Wow. And I believe that was probably in the influence. And it was just a blessing, you know, just to hear oh, that yeah. one time from your son. That's a dream. Like, Oof. At least, oh, okay, I'm okay now. You know, I can screw up some more. <laughs> I can fail some more. But no, yeah, it was just, a, it was just an awesome thing. It was an awesome feeling. So I, I love though that you brought up the, the you know, screw up, fail, you know, those Absolutely. kind of things because, um, you know, we're, we're we're trying to show our families, and we're trying to just, I mean, we're we're, we're trying to succeed, right? We 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 think that we got to show them success all the time, but at the same time, I'm sure that there's been some stumbling blocks that they've seen. And I mean, can you give me a good example? And of that? Leap. Yeah. It, it's part of our training in Global 1000. Remember yeah. our constituency, remember our audience. Many of them 
have failed or have yeah. been put down or have been told you can't do this or you don't have the skills or you know you're gonna have these other cultural challenges which we know are all apparent we're not gonna hide from that right but so a failure for me in teaching and getting them ready for jobs and getting them ready for entrepreneurship is a normal part of the conversation yeah we discussed a very successful young lady in corporate america who who will help each other it doesn't matter you have you're going to fail yeah. I mean, if you're if you're going for jobs, entrepreneurship challenges, well, guess what? Failure is a part of it. Right. How right. we get up, how you go, the resilience that it takes is a really big part of what I do. Doctors, yeah, maybe doesn't have as much patience as I do. For that <laughs> one. And he's honest about it. But that's why I'm here. That's why I'm the chief possibility officer. Oh, I like it's that. It's never CPO. <laughs> He's a quick study. I love this man. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> but, but really, that has been my universal title for a couple of decades, and I live by that mantra. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So how do you instill that with your kids? You know, I'm sure that they've had some goals. I mean, 16-year-old entrepreneur, right? Yes. And I'm sure he ran into a few stumbling blocks along the way. Absolutely. Well, what did you do to help support him through that process? He, he talked about a... Uh, a, a talent show. So when my yeah. son, so when my son was a freshman in high school, and um, I'll use this is because this is real in our yeah. community and in the world today. Yeah. So I'm buying, I'm investing in all these Michael Jordan sneakers like every six months or so. And so I got to the point I was like, okay, this is it. That's over. I'm not buying another hundred fifty, sixty dollar pair of sneakers. <laughs> Jermaine, that's over. You need to figure it out. Yeah. And I said, well, he said he had all these ideas and everything. So I gave him his first assignment to write an executive summary. Oh, wow. And that's how it stuck for me. And so I said, look, here's what an executive summary looks like. You got all these ideas and lots of so go. And so he worked on it for a couple of weeks. You know, he did decent writing, but a little critical about that part. But he wow. did a good job, gave me a good yeah. idea. I was like, there you go. Now your mind's going. And from that, because he loves sneakers so much... He started participating in these forums, and that segued into him being selling sneakers, okay. and trading sneakers. And, and I mean, now I really, I didn't have to give him any cash for a few years. Like <laughs> that was just lovely, you know. So that's, right, that's right. what happened in my case. Academically, um, he was he's great, but I mm-hmm. once I knew that he wasn't going to be. The, I we considered my son to be the most academic, but he didn't enjoy academics. Oh, okay. So you got so you so yeah. now I really yeah. know he's an entrepreneur. Yeah, you know, like he, we were like Jermaine. I mean, he's like good grades, all that, but that started dying in him, and then uh, uh, he started becoming alive and would oh, I can mm-hmm. buy and sell. Yeah, you know, I, you know, he's he and he's, his community was you know he had kids in his class who were the same way. So I, I don't know, you may have a story too. No, well, no, it, it kind of like you mentioned what is failure again. Once your kids see you know part of this evolution. All the benefits from the travel, to all the meetings, etc. They begin to innately understand that entrepreneurship is a model, and that, my mantra has always been: uh, failure is never final; uh, it only provides yeah. feedback. And we never lose in life; we gain wisdom and understanding. And so, in that philosophy and model, and if your family sees that, and they ups and downs, but still stay consistency, it becomes an innate part of them, and, and they become successful from their perspective. Yeah, yeah. So. So you, you do the, uh, the, the, not the talent shows. What did you call them again? Yeah, entrepreneurship. Almost like Shark Tank. Right, okay. So you do like a Shark Tank. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm, I'm guessing that you give them like some, some real feedback oh, yeah, on that, on, on how to and, you know, improve. and. They do the history perspective. They come up with some top entrepreneurs and they see what they want to create. And we yeah. see them a little bit. Give them a little money to see if they can at least create the idea. And ever since my kids have been little, they've assisted me in PowerPoint presentations Introduce oh. me when I get on stage to speak. So it's always oh, been a part yeah. of their philosophy. Yeah. And what really touched my heart, uh, right about four years ago, my daughter calls from school and says, Dad, we're sitting here watching your TED Talk. And you, yeah. So just <laughs> oh, looking at wow. how yeah. Yeah. Uh, it integrates a part, just second nature that to them of what an entrepreneur does and how the family benefits from it. And they begin to coincide, too. My daughter's always doing events. Uh, my son is always doing his little hustle. So yeah. they picked it up indirectly because they see the benefits from it and they know that the foundation is there and center of all of this is the love of God and when yeah. you understand yes. that and your kids see that 
and yes. they know despite what happens, you have that faith, yes. then they're able to be. And again, we're very fortunate. We have some just great kids have come out uh, of, of our, our relationships. Yeah, well, I, I, you, know, you threw out some cool ideas. I mean, having your kids introduce you from stage. Oh, yes. That's a brilliant yes. idea. Yes. That's yeah. fantastic, yeah. you know? Yes, and uh, my book signing, my daughter did the same thing as well. That she yeah. had to my father told me to say this last piece, but, <laughs> but uh, it was great. And so I've integrated them in our business. I also ask our ideas, how yeah. to do marketing, Absolutely. research, uh, and just integrate with those, with those young minds all the time. Yeah. You know? And so and having that integrated is second nature to them. And they know things that, <laughs> if, if you're smart, they, they remember, they really are being raised in a different market paradigm. Yeah. So you've got to listen to them. Yeah. And they've always given me, like, you know, so. they think, you know, okay, he's the cool guy. <laughs> like, there's some things they can share. Yeah. We've got to stay with their language. You, you've got to speak. Yeah, my daughter right. saying, Dad, right. no one's on Facebook anymore. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like, that's so old school. Yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 that's and the, oh, and the faith paradigm, I yeah. fail to mention that a that's lot true. in my stories. But if you listen to the story about my son, he, he in fact, was saying, and I utilized that moment to say, you just got to keep going. You got to keep believing. It doesn't matter what you see with yeah. your eyes. That's how I did it. You know, because I had to enter. Yeah. Like, yeah. Look, man, I just kept going. You Follow just that don't calling. That's Follow it. That calling. That's it. Wow. Well, hey, it, it, we're almost on time. How can anybody uh, get a hold of you if perhaps they have a job that and they need to find some good employees? Or if maybe they're looking for employment or for any other reason? Uh, two ways. Uh, www.global1000.com. Uh, U.S. and we meet every Monday night at the NWCP mm -hmm. offices at Euclid and Delmore at 6 p.m. So go to right. our website, global1000.us, or come to our meetings every Monday night at 6 o'clock at okay. the NWCP office. All right. Thanks All right. for having us. Thank, Thank you. This has been Matt Barber with Time for Success, Business Owner, Dad's Edition. Thank you so much, Dr. Lance and Mr. Bush. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Man, the, unfortunately, the videography was horrible. But uh, yeah, first of all, say hi to everybody on Facebook Live. Let me get you on there. Hey, man, the videography is still horrible. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for watching.